This is Deontay the Bronze from Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamond, Trip Young, and Intern Tom For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com got it uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers Is Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell a body sent ya From spring to winter, tune in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about son Real fans, real talk dot com, I'm out one Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk RealFansRealTalk.com RealFansRealTalk.com What's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. Oh man, we got a whole lot in store for you guys today. If y'all been following the Instagram, y'all seen we had a nice little warm-up interview earlier today. But that's for a later date. We're going to get into everything that's been going on this week in the sports world in a minute. But uh, first, let me introduce my co-host, the one and only Mark the Statman Scavage. What's up, man? Great to be back for another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. As Tripp mentioned, we came from another interview. Had to rush down to make sure we're here and on time for our live audience. You know, that's why I'm still in my suit from the last interview. We interviewed Brandon Steiner over at Steiner Sports in Westchester. Had to go through the New York City traffic, but there is no way I was going to miss the opportunity to rub in how the Warriors are up 3 nothing and LeBron James is about to get swept. And I want to know, Tripp, how do you feel about that right now? I, I had to be here, you know, live on Real Fans Real Talk so I could ask you that question and see what you'd have to say. Well, I mean, first of all, you know, as everybody knows, I didn't pick the Cavs to win the series. So it No, I know, but really I, I, I didn't think that. But, I mean, you didn't pick them to get swept either, which it looks like that's what's probably getting most likely well, going to happen. Well, you know, we got to wait and see what's going to happen with that one. I don't I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen, but, you know, we'll see what up. Game uh, game four is tomorrow. So we'll see, you know. We'll see what happens. See if, if LeBron got anything left in the tent. Well, not LeBron because LeBron has actually been balling. I can't say nothing about LeBron. He's doing his thing. It's, you know, just depends on what you're going to get. From uh, if you're gonna have J.R. Smith running the clock out uh, when the game is tied up, or you know what, or, or you know, I, I don't know what's gonna happen with those guys, but you know, they got one more game, we'll see what's up. You know, they got to play it's their last game, if not, then they then they and they get swept, then we'll see where LeBron goes from there. But I mean, I think I think LeBron got got enough for one in them, he got to get he got to get one off, so we'll see what up. Well, I was picking the Warriors to win in five. I figured they'd win game three. And then, you know, just game three, it seemed like they were in a good position to to win. But the Warriors doing what they do, they go on their runs. And it's like you, you, you're watching a game and you think, you know, your, the other team is in it. And, you know, if you're a fan of that team like you are, you were like, oh, you know, the Cavs are going to get this. And then they just crush you out of nowhere. You know, Steph Curry missing – Almost going for the he, he got the record for most three pointers made in the game, and it almost looked like he was going for the record for most missed threes <laughs> in the game. And then yeah. comes back with a clutch three pointer. LeBron answers back, bringing him within one. You know, Kevin Durant gets that deep three pointer, I believe, before that. And that, you know, either way, uh, the Cavs, you know, didn't have enough ammunition to keep up with the Warriors. Because, I mean, when when guys like Kevin and Durant are, are doing Steph Curry-like three-pointers from, you know, 10 to 15 feet beyond the three-point line, yeah, with, with the hand in their face, th there's not much you could really do to compete with that. Yeah, okay, I mean, Durant played an uh, amazing game. I mean, he had to. He he, he had to get, get one in because he's not like he played, you know, spectacular the first two games. I mean, Steph kind of carried them and Clay the first two games. And then, uh, like you said, Steph had a horrible game outside of the, the three point that he made towards the end of the game. But uh, well, I mean, nobody reached twenty points besides Kevin Durant, who had forty three. Yeah, uh, I think the next highest was seventeen so, points. And maybe. that was what uh, I think Jordan Bell. Yeah. Uh, who had, yeah. 
So I mean, listen, Durant, you know, play. He stepped up. That was the, that's the the second best player in basketball. He did what he was supposed to do in that situation on the road. You know, when when the other guys are struggling, uh, you know, what I'm saying he he stepped it up. Now you said second best player in basketball. If you had a choice between getting Steph Curry on your team or Kevin Durant on your team, who would you pick? Oh you God, would go with well, Kevin Durant. Who, who's who is? Do I have LeBron already on my team? No, the just. Oh, just, just you know, if I'm if, no, I mean I'd still pick Durant. I mean, come on, man, you can't. You're starting a franchise. Six eleven, uh, seven foot six wingspan. Uh, I mean, come on, man, you can't pick Steph. I don't even now, know if you had to take one of them away from the Warriors specifically. Take Steph away from the Warriors or KD away from the Warriors. Which one do you think would make the bigger impact on the Warriors? I would, uh, I would take away Steph if I had to. You take would away, still take away you know. Steph. I don't even have Steph even in the top five right now. Even though Steph did it without Kevin Durant. I'm, yeah, yeah, but I mean, he did it with. The, he was also fortunate that there was no Kevin Love and Kyrie when they the following year when they went up against a healthy team. You know what I'm saying? They 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 lost. So I would still pick Durant over over Steph. I don't like again. I have Durant as the second best player in basketball. Steph's not in my top five, and and that's not to take away from anything from Steph because I still think he's the greatest shooter that I've I've seen. Uh, as far as, far as three point shooter, but outside of outside of of that, I, you know what I mean? That's pretty much it. I mean, it's the honestly, I mean, Steph is kind of a one trick pony. He's a shooter. Yeah, that's it. he's well, got his I mean, handles, but I would take. I mean, I'm not gonna pick Steph over Durant. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Yeah, my thing with KD is, you know, he does pull. You know, take a lot of bad shots. I mean, he makes them a lot of the time, which is extremely impressive. But that's kind of like a Carmelo Anthony, where you're taking a lot of bad shots, but you know. If, and the game is kind of relying on whether you're making those or not. In this case, he put up 43 points because he was making a lot of bad shots. But, um, you know, that's why I'd probably put Steph because I think he's a better playmaker um, with the Warriors situation. If I was starting a franchise, I'd pick Kevin Durant. But with the Warriors franchise, the way they're set up, I think, you know, if you had to remove one, I think Steph means more to the team than KD does, in, in my opinion. But I could see how you, you could say otherwise. But, um well, and and here's the thing as um, also, I mean, if you're taking away Steph from the Warriors, you still have Clay Thompson, who's about the second best three point shooter of all time, maybe. Yeah, but it's not just three. You know, the you know, the Steph dribbling, penetrating, dishing. You know, you know, being able to hit. You know, from ten feet away with the hand in the face, which we, you know, uh, which Clay, he's a great three point shooter, but a lot of he, he's not really creating his own shots and things of that nature. So, yeah. like stuff does. But uh, we got a fan mail question. Uh, Dylan from Queens wrote in: Should LeBron consider going to Boston if he leaves Cleveland? I don't think Boston would. Uh, would really even want him to be honest with you well, with every with all the pieces that they have there. They they did say that they w were going to be taking a meeting with LeBron. Um, would they take him? I mean, if, if I don't I don't know if LeBron would go to Boston, but I do feel like if LeBron said he wanted to go to Boston, Boston is going to take LeBron and win the championship right now. Like I like I think that with that Boston team and then. Kawhi, uh, excuse me, Kyrie coming back, Gordon, Gordon Hayward coming back, and LeBron. I think that and Jason Boston, Tatum and pretty much everybody. And then everybody, come, yeah. But I mean, but they were playing. But I mean, oh, you know, when they come back from from injury, and then you add LeBron James, if if he wants to go there, yeah, they're gonna take him. <laughs> they they're definitely going to take LeBron James, and they're going to win because they would have the deepest team in basketball. And then on top of that, you'd have the best player in basketball and on on probably the best defensive team in basketball. And then you got these guys coming back that are going to be a year better having gotten the playoff experience they got this year going to Game 7, understanding what that's about, but now having a player who will be on the court that can actually close out in the Game 7 for them. So over or under 50% chance you think that LeBron leaves Cleveland after this season, I mean, there's definitely over uh, fifty percent chance because, I mean, there's not much maneuvering that the Cavs can do. 
Now, you know what? They may be able to make something happen with that draft pick. You know, maybe they could finagle getting Kawhi with that draft pick or, or some another uh, superstar. But I think that's kind of a, a long shot, in which case, you know, LeBron will be back in another situation where he doesn't have a team that can realistically compete with Golden State. So I can't really see him staying there. Because one thing, you know, LeBron wants more championships. And right now, Cleveland is not built to beat Golden State as great as LeBron is, as great as he's played throughout his players and through the finals. I mean, he had a triple-double last night. You know, so as great as he's been, he's been playing, this there's not enough in Cleveland. And that's where, you know, and I, I got to tip my hat to Kevin Love because he's actually stepped it up in every game of this finals. He's actually played well. But there's just not enough on that team to compete with Golden State, who's going to be together again next year with at least, you know, with those with four top 20 players. So I can't see LeBron staying there because I don't think he can actually win a championship, you know, with, as long as those four are together in Golden State. Now, if LeBron leaves Cleveland, where do you think he has a better chance of winning a championship? If he goes to Boston or if he goes to Houston? Well, definitely Boston because, one, once again, and we, and we spoke about this all over the show, and I said I was actually, for in regards to Houston and Golden State, I said I was more worried about Chris Paul staying healthy than I even was about whether or not James Harden was going to show up in the playoffs. Yeah. And, of course, what happened? We got down to the – you're up 3-2 in the Western Conference Finals with a chance to beat uh, uh, Golden State. And well, that's the thing. Chris Paul know, gets hurt. But do you know whether Kyrie Irving's going to – Stay healthy, or Gordon Hayward is going to stay. Well, Gordon healthy. Hayward doesn't really. I mean, get, he's get not injured. injury prone, but now like that. you know, once you have that one season-ending injury, it could be like a Derrick Rose situation. But you know what? I still feel like he'd have a even. Even let's just say Kyrie and and Gordon Hayward were out again. Yeah, I mean they they made it to the Eastern Conference a, Finals without both of them. Yeah. So, so now you're talking about adding LeBron. I still think he has a better chance because now not only am I not sure if Chris Paul can actually make it that deep into a season because he hasn't, whether it's because he hasn't made it that far or because he's gotten hurt before he could get that far. I then you add in the fact that I just don't trust James Harden because he does not play any defense at all. And he is a very poor decision maker on the court. So I still, I would still take Boston with with LeBron and give him a better chance than than him going Houston. Now, with if he goes to Boston, would he coach the team or would Brad Stevens coach the team? I'm just no, I still be still be Brad Stevens. But honestly, I, I if he's if he stays in the East. I actually see him going to Philly before I see him going to Boston. And, I mean, we kind of spoke about this last week, but, uh, I mean, him going there to play alongside of uh, Ben Simmons, who's, who, who he pretty much manages because he's signed to Clutch Sports, so we all know that. That's mm -hmm. the bronze company. But, um, so, you know, to play with Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, um, and, you know, and they might they have the cap to kind of finagle another uh, piece up in there. They could move a couple of players around. Um, but, you know, they, they actually decided to part ways with uh, Brian Colangelo, who had, you know, he had the whole Twitter, fake Twitter account scandal, who actually came out that it was his wife who was responsible, but they actually uh, decided to part ways. Um, now, if if Philadelphia goes out and uh, gets uh, and, and does now that they have that opening at GM and uh, bring in uh, David Griffin, the uh, the uh, the former Cavs GM, I think they have a great shot at landing LeBron because LeBron uh, really likes likes him, you know. And I know he wanted him to, to stay as the GM in Cleveland because they probably would have still had Kyrie had he still been in Cleveland. So I could actually see him going to Philly. Is there anyone else who's in the hunt? I mean, the Knicks, of course, because it's New York, and you know, I didn't make that petition out there. Well, you know, retiring from the hate club, but, you know, I, I said I was coming back as the CEO of LeBron yeah. James hate club, so that might have ruined it. The only, but, no, no, that's, that's not what ruined it, Stat, man. He he would just come just to spite you. So that's not what ruined yeah. it. I think what ruins the Knicks' chance now is that we don't know, we don't even know if Porzingis is going to play at all this season. Because there's some, you know, some saying he'll be out half the season, but there's other reports that say he might be out for the entire season. LeBron can't take a year off. 
He's not. He's not getting younger. As, mm-hmm. Even though he's getting better, he's not getting younger. So he can't afford to take a year off. And him for him to go to the Knicks, that would be like him taking a year off from the chip. Because uh, I mean, he's pretty much he could stay in the Cavs and have a bunch of nobodies left on the team. You know what I mean? So you go to New York at least. I mean, they do. They have a, a decent draft pick, but that's not enough. So I can't see him going to 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 New York. There's also talks of them possibly getting Demar Derozan. Yeah, well, I mean that's you know that's all trade talks and whatnot, but I, I just don't see it. Even, they even do still, have cap space to pick up all the pieces besides. Yeah, LeBron. but if they if they if they don't have Porzingis is is the piece that you need on the key has to be on the court, and then on top of that, even let's just say he does come in. But they're a playoff team if LeBron goes there. Naturally. Everybody's a playoff team yeah. if LeBron goes there. So. So Porzingis, I mean, the whole season, I doubt he's going to be out an entire season now, and playoffs. Here's the thing, though: if 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 Porzingis is going to miss, let's just say three fourths of the season, does it realistically make sense to bring him back? At that point, you're not going to be winning. No, because so you I mean, to leave him out. Leave I mean, if back. LeBron's on the team, then you're then you're going well, to bring him back because they're a playoff but team. He's not, That's what he's, I'm saying. He's not going to he's not going to come. Without that guarantee that he's going to, if, if he was if he was healthy and we weren't talking about Porzingis being injured, yeah, I'm, I'm they would have a decent shot. There's a there's a chance, a good chance that he'll play at some point in the season if if LeBron's on the team. If he's not on the team, then you're talking about okay, if he's going to miss half the season, we're probably just going to. That's probably why they're saying he's going to be out the whole season because they don't want to say. He's going to, it really comes down to the standings, whether he's going to come back or not, I think, you know. But I'm saying, I think if, it's the smarter decision for the Knicks would be to just keep him out for the entire year. And do the trust the process it, thing. It, yeah. Well, Le- listen, LeBron could sign a one-year deal with someone else and then, I you mean, know. yeah, he could do that as well. But I just think, I don't think they didn't, they, if, minus LeBron, we can't, don't count LeBron in this. The Knicks without Porzingis for the entire first half of the season, there's a great chance that they're going to be in last place. Yeah. Or at least in that bottom three or four Threshold, teams. Yeah. I so mean, I, the, the, the I, draft pick, the, well, depending on what else they get, because. Yeah, the, I mean, you could have a good pick or, somebody. Or, you know, yeah. there's other free agents. You get DeRozan yeah, and Kawhi Leonard or something like that, then you're talking about a well, whole they're different ballgame. They're not going to get both of those guys. If they don't have. They don't have. I don't even know if they have enough to get one of those guys in a trade, but uh, to get, so, but definitely not to get both of those guys. But if they, you know, if they do keep pushing, they have cap the season, space. That's one of the, you know. But they're not. They have to trade for those guys. They're under contracts though. They don't have enough to yeah. trade for those guys. That's the thing. So if you, you know, you, you trust the process, keep pushing us out the season. Let them get healthier, come back even stronger. Maybe put on a little bit of weight. Um, and then the following season, you know, you're going to have a, a great draft pick. It could be kind of like a Spurs, Tim Duncan kind of situation where, you know, they Robinson got hurt. He was out for the season. They were horrible. Wound up getting that 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 uh, that number one uh, pick in the draft. Got Tim Duncan. So I would say for the Knicks, their best move is to just continue. Just let Porzingis get right. You know what I'm saying? Because he's had also those little ticky tack injuries, you know, as well. So let him take the whole year off, get right, get a good draft pick, a great draft pick actually, because they because they're gonna be horrible. Um, and then and then that's it. And then and, and going back to LeBron, I think the only other sp- I mean spot if he does go to the West, I really don't see him going to Houston because he'd be in the same situation at this point. If if Houston had you know won and got past Golden State. Then, or at least if Chris Paul had stayed healthy and they lost, I could see LeBron going there. Yeah, but even if Chris Paul gets injured and you have LeBron as an addition, they almost beat him. They almost yeah, beat Golden State. I guess I could see Houston beating If you replace in that situation, Chris Houston. Paul with LeBron James, then obviously you're, you're in a better yeah, situation. Yeah, I guess, yeah, because I think cause, cause LeBron is very similar to Chris Paul as far as being a floor general and controlling the tempo of the game. So I do think they would have won that series if they if Chris Paul went down and they still had LeBron. I think they they would have won that series. Um but I mean LA's got the cap room and they can bring in two possibly even three superstars if they move uh if they uh stretch a Lou Old Dings contract out or something something they can do with Lou Old Dings contract. But they can possibly get Get three superstars in the, in LA. Well, the Knicks have cap space too, but they don't you know. have that much cap space. They can flat out sign LeBron and Paul George, and then move something around to get a third play in there. The Knicks don't have that kind of money. Well, because of Joakim Noah's contract, but if they manage to trade for the Rosen, they Phil can Jackson. still sign. They can still <laughs> Phil Jackson. <laughs> they can still sign LeBron and possibly one other 
player. So if you're talking about DeRozan, LeBron, and one other player, and then Porzingis, if he comes back, you're talking about four people there. But well, I yeah. mean, this is also just the Knicks fan dream. Listen, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not mad at you behind that statement. You know, I think that's you know that you still have that kind of hope. And then Knicks, I mean, actually, every time there's free agent frenzy and there's a, a, a free agent out there. You know, you get a little bit excited. You yeah. know, to go go out there and just say, "Hey, you know, we're gonna get this guy. We're gonna get that guy." Well, here's the you thing, Stat Man. You know, and I gotta we, we, shout out to the Steiners. And mo- most of these guys actually, you know, throw New York out there in the mix, so that gets the Knicks fans hyped. I, and then they never. Come. And, and, and it never really happened. The last time we signed somebody big was Amari Stoudemire. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, that was a little later, too, after the... They, we didn't even really get the good years out of Amari Stoudemire. He played well for the Knicks, but yeah, we didn't get those... Before Melo came in. Yeah, but. you know, we didn't get those Steve Nash years out of Amari. But uh, we did, at Steiner Sports, you, they had the... The, the, the pieces of wood from the Knicks the last time they won the uh, championship. Mm-hmm. And I, I took a picture. I want to post it on my Instagram, but I took it for you, Statman, because yeah. I know how you feel about the Knicks and whether or not it's going to be another 60 years before they win. So I wanted to take that picture just to show you I believe and I trust the process, that man. Well, I'm glad right. you do. But uh, listen, we got we got we got one of the, the family members in the building today. Uh, Anthony Mason Jr. is going to be joining us in just a second. Uh, so we're actually, you know, kicks for confidence is coming up. We had a little little rain delay, but it's definitely going down. But we're actually going to sh- uh, show an uh, interview from last year's kicks for confidence with uh, with Mace, and this is after they, uh, I, I believe, they dumped the bucket of uh, Gatorade and water on them. <laughs> An interview. So we're gonna run that interview, and uh, when we come back, Mace's gonna be right here live with us in the studio. Stay tuned. It's a shining star, New York City. DJ Zeke is all about real fans, real talk. Make sure you stay tuned. Don't change that dial. Real fans, real talk. And it's DJ Zeke, and I'm out of here. Dot com. The Arthur Diamond trip, young and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the cats. Hey, 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 all right mark the stat man scavage straight after the know. aftermath of the Mason that we both experienced back live on cable TV. <laughs> how, how do you feel soon. after the after the shout Oh no, this song's so fire. <laughs> All right, well, definitely got caught off guard with that That's one. Crazy. They set me up too. I would say a lot of words on this mic right now, but I'm chilling. All right, but nevertheless, another success. Kicks yeah. for confidence. Hey, my man was playing hard this time too. He kept us in the game. MVP stat man sketch. Definitely, definitely. The, the pain in his face running the first base, though. Was... Definitely, you gotta, you gotta go hard or go home. That's the way I see it when it comes to sports. Got to be competitive. Obviously, it's for charity, but I play to win. But I did say I was going to get two RBIs. I ended up getting two runs instead, but uh, I definitely got the leadoffs, but another success. What do you have to say for everyone that came out? I love you. Facts. I love everybody that came out. When you come out and support and you know, because you don't have to come out. It ain't like you got to pay, you got to travel your time, you got to wake up. So for the proof of who they came out, I love you. Appreciate y'all coming. Well, it's definitely fun being here. I had a great time playing in this one. Re- redeemed myself from last year. And uh, that wraps it up for this edition of Real Fans Real Talk, second annual Kicks for Confidence. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks again to all the sponsors, especially Petro Home Services. And we'll see you next time on Real Fans Real Talk. Yeah, family on three. At family on three. Family on three dot org. At Young Mace Jr. Yeah, we out here. All right. That's what it is. The St. John's legend Gino is up.
Family3.org for all donations. This is a family affair. We need you guys to donate. Make sure this organization experience. Hey man, yo, welcome, welcome back. We are back. That's right. I see y'all seen it. Yo, listen, don't don't get it fooled. Statman was out there getting it in. MVP of yeah. last year's Kicks for Confidence. But uh he said he said he coming back. He said he coming back. Five back for back. six, four for five. All I know is I, I Definitely one out. That's it. We back live right now. Yep. And uh we got Anthony Mason Jr. in yeah, man, the man, building, man. Listen, man. For, First of all, we are really anticipating Kicks for Confidence. Statman had his shorts and his jersey and everything ready to go. Mm -hmm. The rain threw the plans off. But what's up? Let us know when we back. Yeah, we, we figured out the dates now because it was like actually like St. John's homecoming as well. So it was a lot of like um, activity that was cut off that day. Uh, shout out to Accu Weatherman, whoever you are, you suck. <laughs> because clearly, <laughs> did not rain. The whole week was so yes. rain, like the whole week. Yes. Like, we waited up to like Thursday and was like, it, it was it, still it rained for an hour in like Coney Island. But if you looked at the forecast, better. every day said yeah. thunderstorm, yeah. Yeah. eighty percent rain. Man, and it was supposed yeah. to rain Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, too. Like, yeah, it was supposed nothing. to rain four days. <laughs> nothing happened. Th thank They're you playing games with thank us, Thank you, man. Mr. Acker. Where the camera at? Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, catch but up, yeah, we're going uh, to we follow up this week. I'm um, going into next week and come up with this date and get right back to it. Because that highlight just got me hyped. <laughs> I was. Just, I ain't even. I haven't seen it in a while. Like nah, that was, it was just exciting. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, every year has been fun. You know, yeah. going to the game. And when, when you when you had it in Brooklyn, it was dope. Uh, you know, last year again, it was shout out to uh, DJ Zeke as well. That's, shout that's out the my man right DJ there. Zeke. You know, he always he always shows his love. Zeke. But uh, yeah, it's dope, man. Listen, and 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 again, you know, for the kids, family on three. You guys are doing more and more. Every year, shout out to Vance as well and the whole family on three the team. He actually working right now. Like he actually at the tech, so he was gonna come through. But V always working too. He got he got to grind, and he also he also takes care of us up too because he he does the flyers for us when we have the two K tournament. So uh, you know that's always love right there. We'll we'll get him him up in the, in the studio one of these days yeah. <laughs> with us. But uh, tell us what's going on with family on three right now. Uh, family on three. My thing. My main focus is just uh, getting it out there and getting the funding up. So right now we in that financial part, you know, okay. because we kind of established like the foundation part, like as far as like what we do, uh, what our mission is, you know, to get back to the community, to get in these kids facing, you know, try to uh, just inspire them mm -hmm. um, at any cost, you know what I'm saying? Just show them through experience, you learn so much. So people kind of got their point. So right now it's getting to the finance, getting to yeah. the funders, getting to the um, sponsorships. So that's uh, my main focus, but throughout the summer, we got a couple clinics that are going to come up, like just the activities, daily activities. Nice. I'm always trying to go out and speak to the kids. So any schools in the New York area or down south anywhere, you know, just hit me up on my um, Instagram or Family on Three's Instagram because I'm always willing to come out and speak uh, speak to the kids. But as far as Family on Three, we're looking good, man. We got a lot of people support us. So we just actually was, like, opening uh, – this kind of person opened up some account with this bank and whatever. And the bank was like, you know, we walked in, two young black business <laughs> owners. You know, me, I, I don't look too much apart because you see a couple of tattoos, you'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm tall, so you play sports. So she was taking all our information. But then, like, the next day, and it was cool. She didn't give us no feedback, no nothing like that. But yeah. you can tell she still was like, what is this and what are you guys doing? But then the next day, we had to come bring some more paperwork. I had to sign off on something. And she was just like, oh, my God, like, I was on your website for, like, an hour or two, and <laughs> I didn't know you guys really do all this work. I was like, yeah, y'all guys are so young. So we just try to keep it pushing and try to, like I tell V, like, um, it doesn't matter, like, things that just come up, like, kick for comfort, got postponed. Yeah. But just steady try to um, continue to progress and have everything else working. So, you know, and you got people like kick, um, Real Fans, Real Talk, y'all hear me support it, so. Well, no, we just try to keep this fact. movement going, keep the name out there. And I think uh, for me, because you know, I tr I try to 
to get out with uh with Mace when he's when he's with the kids. So I've I've been to a couple of uh, you know events with him, but I think the best one for me was uh was when we went to the uh was it was it the youth shelter in uh the the downtown house? there you go yeah downtown oh, yeah, yeah. and, and uh, them, bro. yeah seeing Absolutely. those kids respond to you and it was it was something that like truly amazing because you have a, a bunch of kids you know late teens uh you know to, i guess the early 20s and uh, you know these are probably you know definitely down and out. They could use a, a lot of uplifting. But seeing you go in and talk to those kids, ball out with those kids, eat pizzas, and just talk, just talk junk, and just giving them your experience, and you could see each one of those kids, man, just really took that. They appreciated. They they received that. They received every j jewel that you was giving them that day. I, so I think for me. That was probably the 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 best thing, you know. what I'm saying just just watching you work and just give back to the you know to to those kids that really need it, you know. No, I appreciate it because this is that's the main point, and I feel like I connect with kids and just people that's coming up or anybody because just through my experience, like you just said, experiences. Like people look at me one way because my name Anthony Mason you know, Jr. and my family name is great, especially up here. At the end of the day, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. You yeah. feel me? So. I have that to fall back on. I got my family down there that taught me so much. And I feel like I had the perfect balance mm. of seeing it down south and then being allowed to come up here and have family and having a pops in the NBA yeah. and seeing that side of it. You feel me? So I'm the perfect guy or perfect you know, person to be speaking to about just back and forth experience. So when them mm. kids, even the kids that go through so much shit, like I might not even go through it, but my best friend did, my homeboy did. Yeah. I didn't lost homeboys and lost family man, and all types of just different experience I'd have been through that kids from misfortune, you know, I can connect with. So when I see that, I just gotta keep on pushing. Yeah. So that's why I say one of the things I like doing most is just speaking to them, you feel me? Cause I'm gonna open you up, we gonna talk. Yeah. Cause that's the number one thing, going to these schools and just speaking with kids and like, it's that fine line between the adults and the kids where they see authority, whereas with an organization or with family on three and how mm -hmm. young we are, and they, they don't relate. see us as an authority right off. You yeah. feel me? So you're like, oh, what up, Mace? You know what I'm saying? Before you just, oh, I don't really want to talk. So you're going to be open to talk to That's them. a fact. Yeah. And they, they definitely open. Right, like, it really did not take much for them to be like, you know what? Dude, he coming with something real today. This ain't no, he just giving up a speech. He don't know nothing about what we actually going through or none of that. They, you know, they like I said, they really received the message that you was getting. And I, and I really feel like they all were better off because you came there that day yeah. and, and, and did what you did. So, you know, we I got a crazy story. That. Like, I sent them kids out there. Like, I didn't even know. We sent the, um, uh, it was Christmas time. And I couldn't make it over there for the Christmas joint because we had did the hospital. So I said, hey, you and send a box. Like, I'm like, yo, you and send a box of shoes. Um, and shout out you and shout out my man Dave, shout out my man Greg Keller, the owners over there. You and shout out Patrick Ewan mm -hmm. for even connecting and allowing those guys to work with me in any which world, form, or fashion. So, but I sent the box over them. I just got a message probably like two months ago, um, like in March, where the kids and the people was just like, just praising like the fact that you sent it because they, they didn't have nothing during the Christmas. That was the yeah. only gifts they got. And they got like a box of yours. And I had forgot, you feel that me, you even did it. that I even did it. So it was just crazy. I was like, damn. So that just goes for like the type of person and type of people we got to be. You yeah. feel me? Just do stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because you it's never gonna know. come back. You, you, never you look know at that, you know, you, oh, it's just a pair of sneakers. Or even even if anything. it doesn't come back to you, I mean, it's it's still something that, you know, makes a big impact on them. Big like, impact. You know, big that's impact. something that they'll remember 10 years from now or something, you know. Definitely. It could be something that they really needed to hear that day that changed their life around, you know. So. Yeah, that's like when I took the kids, I took the kids down to the garden and me, I, you know what I'm saying, but I mean, they never been to the garden and he was yeah. kids from Queens. But the fact that they got to go to the garden, we don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to be able to go to the NBA. I ain't going to know if you're ever going to be able yeah. to buy a Nick ticket. But you was able to go to the garden, and it, I didn't see it until afterwards. You mean, I just be bouncing around. I'm just, mm -hmm. It's just me. It's in my nature to be this way. So yeah. I don't be, but when I see it, like you said, it takes somebody else like, like you know what I'm saying, yeah. you there, and you see the reaction of the kids, because I'm right. just there being me. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? So but when you're on the outside looking in, and you yeah. really see the connection, that's the one thing, is that you have to be able to connect with these kids. Because when you have not 
And you don't, you know, people will always come in and out your lives, but if you don't have that connection to them, you can't receive that. If you don't feel like they really understand what you're going through, it's rough for them to receive that. Yeah, you can, anybody come in and say, hey, take a couple of dollars. But when you actually understand what they're going through mm -hmm. and can kick that real, you know, with them, they, they feel that and they take that with them and, and it definitely helps them. Experience, man. Experience is everything. Can't help this without experience. Being Definitely. Around. We we had an experience going up to Steiner Sports recently. To today before here, we mentioned at the top of the program. We got something, uh, an interesting photo that myself, Trip Young, and the crew got to take. Uh, you guys got that ready over there. Well, not I mean, that now, one. That's interesting too. That's Aaron. That's uh, Aaron, Aaron Boone, Boone. but you know, <laughs> which is great too. But yeah. you know, that's not the one we were referring to. But I did tell him we was going to win 28 this year, and he was going to remember real fans, real talk once they do it. But there's actually another picture <laughs> from Steiner, from Steiner Sports that we you took have that one today. Wow. But, uh, I set it up for no reason, because that's not the photo we were. <laughs> yeah, you know. definitely threw the alley on that one, that man. Who's one? We, got, we, can't, we can't tell you now. We got to know what the pussy it is. We yeah, we got, we, 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 where's, uh, where, where's Focus Frames at? Tell, tell Focus Frames to uh, to get that picture to the control room ASAP, please. What picture is it? You got to wait and see. This is my pops, right? You listen, since we man. had the Aaron Boone <laughs> photo up there, I had to personally thank him for 2003 because every time I speak to a Red Sox fan, I ask them, what is their most painful memory uh, in, in, in baseball. And they don't say the, the Bill Buckner threw the legs in the yeah. 86 World Series losing to the Mets. They say 2003. Also. I wasn't born yet. Aaron Boone's <laughs> home run. <laughs> well, even the older, the older fans who've been through the 86 you know, uh, World Series. How old you was in 86? Five. 25? Uh, <laughs> judging by his beard. Nah. That is true. I mean, at Style Sports, they thought I was in my 40s. Yeah, you walked in Style like, Sports, gotta... they thought it was a business deal going on. <laughs> they didn't even know. He's Stan interviewing? Man. Are we interviewing him too as well? Stan Man came out with, with, with a box of uh, order. Is, is, is he buying us? <laughs> is he buying us? <laughs> I, tell, I, tell I tell you one thing. I did uh, manage to uh, take a picture with uh, Samaki Walker's uh, championship ring. <laughs> I bet y'all are they sports <laughs> fanatics. They probably was in there <laughs> running like they was at the Willy Wonka. Oh, no, we were. <laughs> we, they, had, they, had, uh, they had Shaq's shoe in there. That's the uh, size. I swear Mark with the shoe <laughs> up to his face. It's, it's a museum in there. Like, they it, in there like, yo, guys, y'all yeah. want to interview that? Yeah, no, we just, we still looking around. We still looking around. But uh, yeah, when you get up in there, man, you see all the stuff they got, the, just the jerseys. If you're a sports fan, you'll love it in there. It's, it's definitely a dope experience. But uh, and they had something special Shout in there Steiner, too. Man. He, got, he had a great relationship <coughs> with my family, my pops, and himself. I've been to like the crib where they got the gym at. Yeah, he was saying he told us about the uh, yeah. about the gym and what. got a bowling that. Yeah, Steiner got a bowling that in his crib. <laughs> <laughs> Start selling memorabilia. We got, to, we got to tell them to invite us to, to the next one. What this is? We are going to take this to Steiner. <laughs> get a little change up. I think was it Riddick Bowl on one of those? Yeah, well, 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 I don't bring the Riddick Bowl. You probably get some change really. for the Riddick Bowl. <laughs> and when you got like, once you establish like Steiner them, it's like, that's what people go to. Like, yeah. If, you know, Sylvester Stallone, Cal you know what I'm saying? Just different things. So, like, once you got that, that type of uh, uh, history, in their business, like, phew, yeah, you get people toothbrush. Yeah, and they had <laughs> he, he, he was talking to us about the the grass that they <laughs> they out here yeah. so, so No, nah, that's what had tripped me tripped me out about um because that was my first time getting into like what what the memorabilia game was when the Yankee Stadium got yeah and they, had that and they was the guys that went and got home plate got dirt they had the locker the room there the chairs every they you know had so much dirt. Yankee stuff yeah I don't know people know that. not me I'm not gonna buy no <laughs> dirt <laughs> yeah I'm not buying I'm not dirt I don't care <laughs> that's not something I buy I buy a baseball bat I buy a jersey I buy a helmet I'm, buying I'm not buying nobody's I'm dirt. dirt I don't care <laughs> not even the Yankees dirt I will not be buying that now they oh, hold 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 buy it. Hold on. it ain't no dirt you about i'm not sitting up here buying somebody's dirt <laughs> it ain't no <laughs> dirt as a sports do, fan they do no. creative things too, i like was not think. i will not buy dirt i'm sorry they yeah. put it in a thing and make it for a like yankee coaster out and, of it and, and all that outside sports. i mean it would, if your favorite guy who be the yankees if it was the yankees your favorite sports whoever if overall it would be the yankees but i'm still not buying nobody's dirt i'm sorry i can't do it favorite player i mean well right now is lebron you buy lebron toothbrush Hell no. 
LeBron too, bro. You would buy LeBron too, bro. Well, I don't he don't even like LeBron. Who is this guy? I'm not. You know, you would probably buy Patrick Ewan's toothbrush, though. You would, I would buy <laughs> Patrick Ewan's <laughs> I wouldn't buy a Patrick Ewan's toothbrush, no. I was trying to think of the favorite player, and the first one to my mind was, was Patrick Ewing. I'm trying to think of other sports, like, you know. I didn't know Ewan was your favorite player. Yeah. Let me call him. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that man's favorite player, man. Because he's that listener, man. When, when, I, when I interviewed your dad, um, and off camera, he said, you know, I, I told him that he was my second favorite player of all times. He's like, second he favorite player? What kind of... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, who's your favorite? You, you're a Ewing guy, aren't you? I'm like, yeah. I mean, come on. Like, but... Um, check out the suit. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, check out this fall in apparel, too, man. Make sure I go grab it. Back in those, oh, back, back. Back in those playing it. days... You would have a great game. He put up, like, I was talking about this with our director, Cliff, on the way up up to Westchester to Steiner. I would say, you know, Ewing were in game seven against the Rockets in 94 when they lost. He put up, like, 34 points, 12 rebounds, something like that. He even hit a three-pointer in the corner because Starks and everybody else was missing him. But the media would always be like, Oh, but it's Patrick Ewing's fault. He, the best player would always have the blame. Now LeBron James is like, oh, poor LeBron. He doesn't have enough help. Oh, I see, poor see, baby. Yeah, man. Oh, he put up it's this. Too many he counts. did his job. It's too many he counts. did his job. It's not his fault. It's, it's poor LeBron. He doesn't have enough well, help. Well, they blame Patrick Ewing. Who's saying it? Who's saying it? Saying it? Well, I mean, the media. I mean, the it's half and half. It's half and half. Haters. Half of them are the like, oh, yeah. poor LeBron, he doesn't have enough help. Ain't nobody saying, everybody knew LeBron's situation going into these playoffs. The thing about that I'm tripping off people, that all the folks that was like, hey, LeBron going to be our first round, second round. Oh, he definitely going to be third round. Yeah. Oh, shit, he in the finals again. He's supposed to be there. You feel nice. me? Like, come <laughs> on, yeah. Stop being a hater, I mean, man. I figured he would... Everybody knew the situation before it happened. I figured he yeah. would make yeah, it no to the, to I mean, the finals, and then Boston started playing really well, and I'm like, well, maybe Boston will beat him. Hope that he beat him. Okay, he beat him, started but. his playoffs as a LeBron hater. <laughs> <laughs> did you think he was making it to the finals? Honest to God. Did he say, I don't know, I don't know. No, no, he, he did say the Cavs would, would make yeah, it to okay, the finals. Okay. And lose. Nah, because it was a lot but He's of still a hater, but, that, but he did say that he was going to make it to the finals. But there was a lot of people out here that felt like, and I feel like, they got a good supporting cast as far as size. But yeah. I feel like their supporting cast is just not even living up to what they do. Yeah. J.R. Smith plays way better than this in years we've seen him. Yeah. George Hill. Come on. Yeah. San Antonio and, uh, what was the team? Sorry, Zepay, on. Come on, bro. Yeah. They're not playing up, and then I feel I was like saying that last week. Only well, everyone feel, that came to the team afterwards, you know, they used to play a lot better. They used to play a lot better, yeah. but they're well, playing in, the, in that system. Just, they well, just I don't, think I don't even think system. it's the system. You free? What? Yeah. I, honest, okay. How, but oh, ask you a question. What y'all think about the coaching too. of the playoffs? Coaching these two coaches? I don't really um, think it's great coaching, even from the last the Brad Stevens. But I don't. Lou is decent, but LeBron, LeBron is more so. Floor coach run yeah, the team. So it's like you don't say too much. But he, but he controls who goes in and out of the game, though. Like, I do, like, all right, you punish uh, Rodney Hood in the last series for not wanting to go in in garbage time. But now it's the finals, and you need every chance, every weapon you can get. And J.R. Smith should be is smart playing and starting horrible. over J.R. And exactly. look at the game that Rodney uh, Hood had last night. Yeah. He probably, yeah, I don't understand what that was. Was it. it in those situations, as a player, I feel like it couldn't have been about play because Jordan Clarkson, he got exposed. No, it was just he that he didn't want to go in and garbage. Yeah, it was, yeah. So I, he, I don't feel like when you want to win something, bro, you got to You can punish him that. a little bit. You feel he me? He did. He punched him in Boston, but now it's the finals. You got to play him. And you need that size. It's He's a 6'8 guy who can play defense and hit the three. And you need him confident. Yeah. And look what he did. Look what he did last night. He did pretty decent. He job. played. He outplayed everybody uh, outside Except of Kevin Love. I like it the way Love played last night. I need that at him every night. He's been playing well the, the, the series though. It's, you know what I mean? But it's but you got like you can't have five guys on Golden State playing well and it's just LeBron and Kevin Love. It's not going to win the game. I'm gonna go on stat. It's a LeBron and I, I LeBron my guy. I'm one. Of his, I feel like yeah, he's the best player, but. I can see the differences, and I can see 
just the edge between the guys that they compare him to and why I feel like he can be more impactful on the game, bro. Pass first, I feel you, bro. It's all good. But unless you're tired, I would rather him attack way more. Yeah. I would say everybody's talking about the J.R. Smith play. Well, what about the play when uh, he had JaVale McGee on him? He made a great move. JaVale was guarding him good, made a great move. Mm-hmm. Pass first LeBron. He got free of JaVale. Could have floated the basket, got a bucket, and went up a point or two, I think. Yeah. He passes it to Tristan Water. Thompson under the basket. It goes oh. as a turnover. Yeah. And that's just his mentality. And I feel like, bro, you got to turn up. Like, fuck, forget that. It's, yeah. it's the finals, bro. If it's, a, is it, if it's a four-point swing, I can see what an old head say. Mike is not going to allow you beat him by four points. Yeah. So, you know, I can understand it. And LeBron just got that mentality. It's a pass first. And I, I don't really, I, don't, I really feel like you got to change that, bro. basketball player that doesn't work it, out. It's not for that point. It's yeah. because, bro, you can overpower the situation in yeah. us to win. And that's, that's the thing. Sometimes you just got to trust yourself as opposed to saying, I'm going to make the, the best play in the situation and just say, I'm the best player in basketball and there's nobody can on Golden State that bro. can stop me in a close game situation there's I, yeah. nobody that can stop him because i feel like l- legit you go to the basket yeah he can make some fumble plays but it's either gonna be a foul or a lay yeah you feel me and i would rather you take those shots then even that dime to george hill i feel you bro you at the three but it's like eight seconds left and you got curry on him you didn't took him to the basket every play yeah. before and it. just keep doing it they couldn't they they there's one thing about Golden state they are a great team but they cannot do anything with lebron there's nobody i mean there's nobody in the league that can really stop lebron except maybe Kawhi. but other than that there's, what they there's, say. there's, there's nobody all myths that you can stop lebron i ain't seen nobody well, stop him excuse yet. me contain lebron at least yeah, Kawhi does a really good job on, on slow on, down <laughs> yeah slow down a little bit i, I was kind definitely of not uh, uh, is the world. Uh, right, Marcus but. Morris definitely not him though. He's not Top the of the discussion today. What y'all think about him not guarding Katie last well, night? Uh, well, it's it's rough because here's the thing. You cannot you can't have I would love to see LeBron and just go one-on-one with KD for 48 minutes. But you can't have that. See, Durant has the luxury of being able, he can step out and go with LeBron because he doesn't have Draymond, to, to do the amount of work that LeBron has to do. But you're asking LeBron to score the basketball, run the offense, rebound the basketball, and then guard the second-best player in basketball? He, like... He already playing 48 minutes a game almost. So Boy, how much more do you do? No, no, no. advocate. My thing is back to kill mode. It's like, all right, I feel you, but I'm going to tire myself out when I just seen KD score on these people eight times in a row. It's like, all right, bro. Yeah, well, I, I got him now, G. Say, it's fucking like it's like I don't know. It's just like I don't know. Well, like, I, I would say it's kind of comes down to like, I was at the last four minutes of the game. That's when you gotta say. You gotta now, just say, forget it, bro. I'm gonna, I'm it's gonna four go. minutes left. We in a close. Yeah, game. that's what I'm saying. And then that situation, then it's like, all right, you know what? Nah, I'm just gonna guard him. He's hot right now. I'm the best option that we're gonna have of him even getting slightly frustrated at the, when he's shooting like that and just and just go in and when lebron stepped up on him he he's hesitant oh yeah that's he's very hesitant LeBron even in, i mean when 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 in game one he didn't want no parts of lebron when lebron was doing cooking like he was cooking he didn't want no parts of lebron you know so you you kind of have to to step up if you lebron in that situation you know, I mean, I understand the the tiredness is is rough because nobody else is, is doing anything at that point. A lot of times they're just standing around. And even though, you know, like I said, I tip my hat to Kevin Love earlier because I think he's playing good. But, you know, he's scoring 21 in, in, in I guess, in 12 in, in the games. But is that a, a really, really impactful 21 points? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how you can score, but it not, like, be game-changing. You know what I'm saying? So... It's it's just rough. Like they gotta have somebody else to step up. I mean, at this point, so it's over. It's a sweep. Nah, I ain't gonna say that now. I ain't gonna. LeBron, I don't think he it's gonna sweet. he gonna allow that to happen. But uh, I mean, we gotta go back to Jr. Smith, man. My uh, thing is, I mean, Golden State didn't. Uh, you know, I, I mean, both mentality about that allowed to happen. I feel like I don't say he folding, but it's like, like you just said, would you want me to kill myself? He's like, he got to wait till next season when I can get a better team. <laughs> he's, he's over there playing on what team he's going to play for, which we talked yeah. about at the top of the program. If he doesn't come back to the Cavs, uh, what uh, what team do you think he ends up with? Boston, Philly, uh, Houston, or somewhere else? 
my thing is, and I told people, I was we spoke about this a long time. I feel like LeBron's story is real. It's like almost right now it's going into something that people never did. You rebuild franchises. You feel me? Miami came back to Cleveland, took them to the finals. So it's like one of the famous fans. I know he's not coming to the Knicks. So I, I mean, if he came to the Knicks, look at the bright side. All three of us would be rooting for the same team. No, no, I feel well, that is true. I definitely feel. <laughs> I, I just don't. I don't want to get her hopes up and be like, I don't think he come. I don't know who he would come with. But I, my thing was, I thought he was going to go to the Lakers. I say the Lakers because I feel like for a guy, that's another staple in his yeah. uh, books, saying that you brought the Lakers at the staple back center. to <laughs> yeah. the another finals. Staple, you know what I'm saying? The Lakers is a have great that franchise. They, that's what I, you know what I'm saying? They have, they the have thing enough thing is, to sign I think it players. would make, be a bigger... Um, that would be a bigger impact if he rebuilt the Knicks franchise and gave them a chip because you know, the, the Lakers. It's not. It hasn't been that long since they won. Yeah, but he don't I, have I'm not, no, I feel you know, the Knicks franchise. The only thing with the, the Knicks Kobe, is that Kobe yeah, was I feel over like there. Yeah. Yeah. Kobe yeah. was over there. Kareem Abdul Jabbar was over there. Oh, Magic you do got Fizdale there. here. Will, Will Chamberlain yeah, but was there. Like you know, Fizz, man. Yo, Coach Fizz was one of the guys gave me my first opportunity in with the league and all that. Facts. Miami. When I played down in Miami, Fizz was my guy. Yeah. I mean, so I, 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 I like I like Fizz though, but they just the Knicks don't have enough right now. LeBron can't, can't waste no more time. He's trying to get rings. He don't have time to wait. But there's for some the guys out there that go with him. I'm not. Well, how is he gonna, how they gonna get there? There's not enough contract room for everybody. They don't got that kind of cap room. If they didn't give Tim Hardaway Jr. that dumb contract that's seventy something million for five years, maybe oh, yeah, they have, they they have cap room as long as the, I mean. If no, they, but they don't have that kind. Con- LeBron is you gonna have to pay LeBron thirty plus million a year. They don't have enough cap room to sign another max player. Well, him after being that. in New York, the other money that he makes for being in New York will make up for him. I mean, even. Yeah, How much of a pay cut you think he's going to take? I mean, he's going to want a max him and PG can go he, he has, yeah. but they all have the cap room. Especially nah. if they do that trade for oh, the Rosen. Was, he's, uh, he's, he's, Porzingis coming back killer? I hope so, but he's not good. LeBron is not Probably going to a team season. that cannot win a championship right now. And the Knicks are not a team, even if LeBron goes there, they're not a team that can win a championship right now. He's not going to that kind of a team. If he goes to, if he, if he, if he's going to leave the, uh, the horrible team he's on right now, he ain't going to leave there to go to a team where he can't win. One. He's going to a team where he's going to not only get back to the finals, but have a really good chance of winning. Well, they'll see what other moves they make before you know signing him, whatever the case may be. But I think, do we have that photo up? I think, all right, so now, now we have the original photo. <laughs> right them jersey burners don't see? get too hype in Cleveland though. Yo, yeah, you see it. <laughs> y'all know, y'all don't know nothing about that. There, see that? No, them two brothers right there. Uh, That's a real fans, real man. talk exclusive. Those brothers? Yeah, they brothers. No, they're not brothers. That's, yeah, that's our like technical director, Cliff. And that's uh, <laughs> that, that's our on-location uh, photographer, focus friends over there. And y'all see, that's, that's an no, exclusive. To the right left there. of you, that's the two Marks, myself and uh, the other Mark. That's what oh, you know. Oh, no, yeah, y'all two are definitely twins. Why do, why do white dude in the photo look like y'all aging or something like Because <laughs> he is. That's how he oh, that's Mark. <laughs> Know, you gotta what? love this picture. That's a real fans, real talk exclusive. <laughs> no, oh my fine. goodness, man! And that and that painting, that painting is so dope, man. Y'all, first of all, y'all make sure y'all following Steiner Sports because they got so much sports memorabilia. If you are a fan, even Cliff found something that he liked. There, they had the Eagles uh, helmet signed by Nick Foles. That you yeah. know, that was supposed to be in the garbage, but they just kept oh, it. Nick yeah. Foles for whatever reason. Yeah, you know, this this. They, you know, they they got some eagle stuff in there, Cliff. You, you, I know you enjoyed that one, but it's okay. You know, but yeah, uh, I think Lakers though. They got the Lakers. They, 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 they have the cap room PG. to sign. Yeah, because they could actually sign all three of them. I'm telling That's you. That's the thing. And and if they if they and do who that, he plays like who is Magic? Come on. If they if they do that, Golden State is out of there. I'm sorry, Golden. There's no. We don't even have to talk about, about Golden State. I don't Boogie. Know. LeBron and Paul George in Los Angeles. We finna get out of here. I just want to ask one question, right? I don't know. I see him doing it. All right, so y'all think Steve Kerr is a good coach? I don't know. I can't say. I don't think so. I can't say because I haven't seen him coach a team that doesn't have the, the talent that he had on. Well, I mean, Mark Jackson had the team the year before, and they still did really well, but he pushed them to the 73-9. and nine. 
I feel the like, year, but, but I mean, I feel like that's after they were seasoned. That was that was, and yeah, I feel like, two years I, after. I feel like last series showed that they can't, that he can't against you. Yeah, I mean, like that was the worst basketball. That's who we were supposed to get before Jeff Hornacek. You know, yeah, the Knicks. That didn't happen. But so. I mean. I don't blame Steve Kerr. Oh, I'll go to the Knicks so you, for the as a team making for Phil plans. Jackson, yeah. or go to the Warriors, which is already a winning team. Exactly, so. he made the right decision. I'll say that <laughs> he made the right decision He's to go to the Knicks. But I can't, I, I can't really but he speak took him to the chip the level. year after Mark Jackson. Yeah, after they were seasoned, it's like throwing some hot sauce on some greens. Yeah, it's like they good, but I throw this hot sauce on it. Yeah, yeah. So but, I mean, you but, see that. Pl- Playing team basketball and everything. I mean, they were they were they were already a great team. I mean, look, we saw what Luke Walton did. did Luke Walton had the, the best starting record in the regular season. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so in that situation, I, and I'm not saying that Steve Kerr is a bad coach. I'm just saying I can't judge based off of him having the best team in basketball in years. You know what I'm saying? And then add now, you, and then you add Kevin Durant to that. I can't really say you a good coach. But there's a lot. Yeah. There's times where teams have talent and they just don't mesh well together. So I, I mean, like now they've never. I've never had seen a team. Nah, like that. Don't, don't never, mesh well together. I've never seen a team in history with talent like the Golden State yeah. Warriors. So that's so, why I'm saying I mean, it's kind of rough to say whether or not he's a good you, coach. You know, the Lakers have had some squads where they didn't win. You know. Uh, that year when Dwight Howard, Steve Nash, and company came in, but I mean, yeah, they, they, had, they had old Steve yeah. Nash. These are all people that was prime. Yeah, that wasn't MVP Steve Nash. You be talking about these guys? Or I don't think none of them is over thirty. So yeah. yeah. that's why I was saying, like, even with their super team. Well, you look like, at the Thunder too, but I mean, they still LeBron played well the second team. half of the season. But the Warriors are right, well, a super team. That about wraps things up for this edition of Real Fans Real Talk. Make sure you're liking us on Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash real fans real talk twitter and instagram at real fan talk like to thank anthony mason jr for joining us once again make sure you're checking out family on three family on three dot org twitter and instagram at family on three and uh make sure you're supporting them and supporting us we'll see you guys next week here on real fans real talk thank you for joining us again have a good night everyone peace love unity Face, face, and that was in there? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh-huh, and if uh-huh. your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com got it. Uh, they got uh, the hottest bloggers. Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. Uh, I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com.